And the news continues now in other parts of Africa. We go to Kenya, where its Education Cabinet Secretary, Judge Magoha, has announced that stakeholders have shelved schools reopening until 2021. Speaking to the press, Magoha explained that primary and secondary schools will resume next year in January with a phased reopening of colleges and universities on a case-by-case -case study. He said that the 2020s uh, school calendar should be considered lost owing to the coronavirus pandemic that saw all learning institutions throughout the country closed in mid-March. The directive also gave instructions for reopening of universities and college institutions. He said the universities will only reopen when they meet the requirements of government guidelines. We are now joined by Hilary Okech, who is a lecturer based in Nairobi in Kenya, to take a look at this and other conversation. Good to have you, Mr. Okech. Yes, uh, good morning to you, Amaka. Thank you for having me on the show. Great. Now, in consultation with the Ministry of Health, we have agreed schools to reopen when daily COVID-19 cases reduce consistently for 14 days. Social and physical distancing is the most critical factor in ensuring safety of learners. This is uh, lifted from the statement from the Cabinet Secretary. So let's begin by asking you, what's the update on COVID-19? Are you concerned about the increasing numbers? Uh, yes, I think as, as a citizen of Kenya, for now, I am quite concerned with the numbers. As of today morning, we have a total of 8,000, about 8,209 cases confirmed. And the numbers, well, you know, they're still increasing at a steady rate. So over the past two days, we've had 360 new cases just about there. So the numbers are increasing a lot sharper than we have noticed um, since the March 15th of this particular year, which is around the time when we got the first cases announced. So the other issues which are causing, confer, uh, causing concern for me are some hospitals have also started mentioning that they are getting overwhelmed hmm. by the number of COVID patients being admitted in their facilities. Wow. All right. If I may again use the words of the cabinet secretary, he said 2020 school calendar should be considered lost. Hillary, is this good news or bad news? How, how does it sit with Kenyans most affected? I think it, it depends on which side of the table you're on. Um, all of us have experienced being a pupil or a student at some point in time. So I would assume some pupils are very excited that they don't have to go to school for an extended period. But the, those who had to do their national exams um, this year, you know how important it is as a student to complete your high school or primary education and move on to the next phase. Mm -hmm. For such students, I believe, you know, they must be really crushed by the news and they must be really hoping that um, January 2021 will indeed be the day that um, studies resume. Mm -hmm. So again, when you think of Kenya as a society, education, with those families who value it, they take a lot of pride in their children going to school. And a lot of families, you also have to understand, were not ready for a situation where their children would be at home for such a long time period. So again, it gives parents a challenge as to what are they going to do mm -hmm. um, during all this time when you're restricted in your social activities and your children are home. And I think the best advice I'll give um, people who have their exams coming up next year is just make the most of this time to get into a routine and prepare and study for the exams to the best way possible. Right. Now, uh, schools were earlier recommended to begin in September, but what necessitated this drastic change, which according to the cabinet secretary, and I quote, we are happy to inform Kenyans that the president accepted the recommendations. What changed? Well, I think the, the biggest problem we're having globally with COVID is people are planning ahead and they're putting a schedule on it. But when you look at, uh, you know, what Dr. Anthony Fauci of, you know, the immunologist in the United States of America, he said that humans should work according to the timeline of COVID. COVID does not work according to the human's timeline. So when the president did um, approve of the plans that the Ministry of Health put forward, it was mostly just to give them the green light so that when they're ready to progress, they would move forward. I don't think it was a bad decision. I think the, the problem we're having is putting specific dates on things moving forward when we don't have the 
right idea. None of us are able to foresee the future and know what is going on. Mm. So a good solution would be, we know we have the plans in place, but what we need to do now is simply wait until things are safe. And once we know things are safe, we can maybe start introducing dates into everything we're trying to do as a society. All right. The, the directive also gave instructions for reopening of universities and colleges. And according to the CS, they said the universities will reopen only when they meet the requirements of government guidelines. I mean, Hillary, I know that you are a lecturer. And I want to ask, how does this sit with you as a lecturer? Well, um, obviously, a bit uncomfortable by the idea. I do understand the urgency of getting things back to normal, but when I look at what they have on paper, it is a good plan. For example, when they talk about um, limiting the amount of students in a classroom, um, sorting out the students' accommodation so that people are living in a comfortable environment, the wearing of masks, the social distancing inside um, the learning, uh, the lecture halls and the like, on paper, it seems like something which is doable. But as you can imagine, doing it in a practical way, what we are asking is for ordinary citizens who have no um, solid knowledge of healthcare protocols to engage or you know, integrate a system which is supposed to be a measure to prevent the spread of a pandemic. I think it would be a good idea if um, whatever universities or learning institutions do, it would be very critical for us to have a health professional um, in these particular institutions who would be able to assess and make sure that universities are doing things in the best way possible. I don't think testing of uh, someone is, um, is enough because you can be tested negative for COVID today, but tomorrow things change. So, you know, it's really about us having a set of instructions, mm -hmm. following them in the best way possible and having a health official who is there to ensure and guide people that things are being done in the best way All right, um, Hillary. possible. But Hillary, in general, I'm, afraid, I'm quite concerned about it. Yeah, I'm afraid that's all we can take. Thank you so very much, Hillary Okech, okay. for your contributions. And do keep safe out there too.